Howdy everyone! For today's Jolly Lark, I wanted to do something a little bit different and show you some of the conversion and modeling side of things. Recently picked up some of the new Minotaurs for Conquest The Last Argument of Kings and had the idea to turn them into more of a clockwork contraption to go along with the kind of cyber steampunk aesthetic of the hoplites for that game. That's what I'm using this for, but I think you could take a lot of these same ideas and techniques to make your own clockwork contraptions for other army projects. To start with here, all I've done is make a hole in the back of the Minotaur that's the right size to fit part of a rivet. Um, so this is part of an unriveted rivet, which in, consists of kind of a metal rim and a little cylinder that fits inside. This is perfect for making a little portal into the model. Now with the snips here, what I'm doing is just cutting lines in that cylinder part that's reaching in past the inside of the model uh, that'll allow me to bend the excess metal around the inside of the model so that the opening isn't quite so deep. So then with just you know some kind of stiff object you have around here, I'm just gonna use the back of a, a paintbrush with those little lines that you've scored. Uh, you can just then use the end of a paintbrush or a whatever, any sort of metal tool to bend those little segments of the rivet around the inside like so. That'll help keep the rivet in place, um, you know, just making sure it's, it's really a really sturdy hold and will give us a little bit shallower hole to then put something in the portal. So with that done, I'm gonna take this little old innards of a, a watch. I just bought a lot of these on eBay. Um, there's a bunch of, of watch old kind of busted watch innards. I'm just gonna glue that in place behind the portal that we've just created. So now, instead of the kind of more organic look, that really transforms the miniature to make it look like you've got a little window into some clockwork innards like so. For the next step, I'm gonna grab my little cordless rotary tool here, and I'll put a link to that below. I just something inexpensive I picked up off Amazon. Um, and with a Dremel engraving bit, I'm gonna kind of work around the kneecaps and the places where the limbs bend to make the model's organic legs look a little bit more like there's something that's articulated, you know, like there's a hinge in there somewhere. And with the bronze paint job, we're gonna give this later. Hopefully these kind of jointed limbs will help tell the story that this is a mechanical monster, not an actual minotaur. All right, we're gonna break out some more power tools. This time we've got a, our cordless drill with a brad point bit. And I'm gonna drill into the side of the model's knee. And I picked a drill bit size that matches one of the little washers that I have visible there. We'll set the washer in the little depression that this drill bit makes to make the knees look like they're articulated joints. Those style drill bits that have the little point at the end uh, those are useful for help keeping the, the drill in the right place. You really don't want the drill bit wandering around on your model. And you can see that it creates a little circular depression in the model that one of those quarter inch washers just mostly pops right into with a, with a bit of glue. It, it's a really perfect fit. Um, so you just kind of set it in there and let the glue do its work um, without gluing the washer to your fingers quite as many times as I did. Next up, we're gonna add a tiny little watch screw to the middle of the washer, just to help fill that space. And, and again, tell, kind of tell the story that this is a mechanical bit. Taking a pair of heavy duty clippers and just clipping part of the, th the screw threads off so that it'll sit nice and neat in the middle of that washer, which is another advantage of using that brad point drill bit, that it creates a little bit of a deeper hole in the middle that you can fit one of those little watch screws in there. And I'll put a link below to those little packs of washers and screws that I bought. They're, again, not expensive um, and, and handy to have around. I'm gonna put a little bit of zip kicker activator on there and just so that screw is kind of just balanced in there on top of the glue. And I don't want that screw to tip over when I move the model around. I want it to stay centered in that hole. So just a teeny bit of super glue activator is handy there. So next up, I'm gonna take some of the Tamiya Extra Thin extra thin plastic glue and use that to just kind of clean up the edges of the engraved bits. Um, I've already, I didn't show this because it's boring and just can leave it off camera. I kind of scraped away the edges a little bit with a knife just to get the worst of it off. 
but just kind of bathing the area in a very thin coat of the plastic glue cleans up the edges and you can see there that it just kind of smooths things out and gets rid of some of the little micro particles and plastic dust it just kind of melts those into oblivion and cleans up your edges so another neat little clockwork conversion you can do is to take a limb and cut it at a joint just cut it straight through just used a little hobby saw to cut the arm at the elbow and then i'm going to use the same hobby saw to take off maybe another quarter an eighth of an inch between an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch of material and i'm going to add a clockwork joint at the elbow so i'm cutting it and then i'm cutting it again and that extra little slice is to make up for the thickness of the cogged joint that i'm going to add in a second because what you'll find is that if you just cut the arm once at the elbow and then add a couple washers and a gear at the elbow you're going to end up with a model that has overly long gorilla arms and you know if that's what you're going for cool um, but trying to keep the model's proportions similar to the original, I don't want to add material to the length of the arm without also taking away a similar amount of material. So what I'm going to do here is just with the, some of the different washers and gears and stuff that I picked up, I'm going to make a little stack that's washer, cog, washer. Um, the three layers looks good. It implies kind of some sort of linkage and joining mechanism. Um, so I'm going to make just a little washer cog washer sandwich and use that to replace the elbow joint. So with just a little bit of glue, kind of stack those up there, washer, cog on top. These fit together really nicely. Um, use a little bit of zip kick, uh, zip kicker, you know, super glue activator, which helps speeds up the process. Um, I don't know if you noticed, this is a, a, a trick that I learned from somebody else of just using the end of the the nozzle tube to actually unscrew it from the bottle and just use a tiny little drop to activate the super glue instead of using the spray nozzle. This stuff stinks. And when you spray it out of the bottle, it kind of atomizes it. It makes it smell even worse. Um, so if you just unscrew the nozzle and use the end of the uh, little tube to apply a tiny bit of activator, uh, that works even better. And there you go, all put together. You've got something like this with mechanical knees, mechanical elbow. I didn't do anything with the shield arm because that's kind of hidden behind the shield. We've got the clockwork portal. We are ready to put some paint on this. Now, if you're thinking so far that this is a overly complicated process, um, the paint job is as simple as the conversion is complicated. Uh, just starting with a coat of black primer, we're gonna put with a, a big fat wide cheap brush going to paint the entire miniature all over in the pro acryl bronze. Um, in a continuing theme of my videos, I kind of don't believe what it says on the bottle. Um, this is a bronze color, but it's much, much darker than many other companies bronze, um, which I, I like. It makes it for a really nice base coat for bronze. We often end up wanting to, to lighten it up with a brighter color, but it is a terrific color as a base coat for any aged metal. Uh, aged bronze, aged brass, that sort of thing. With the bronze dry, I'm going to give this just an all over wash of Agrax Earthshade to darken up the cracks a little bit. I was not really dry brushing on the bronze, uh, I was kind of giving it an all over base coat, so adding back in the Agrax Earthshade wash helps to darken up some of the cracks and crevices. So next up is more conversions. <laughs> this is this is decidedly not recommended. But while I was painting this Minotaur, I felt like this uh, this model in the unit didn't have quite the as much mechanisms and mechanics as I wanted. Um, I'm doing a unit of three of these. I wanted them all to be a little bit different. And I had the idea while I was putting on the bronze base coat of making a little wind up key for the back of one of them that doesn't have the port the rivet portal um, so to do that i'm just grabbing a little styrene tube cutting a notch in one end with a saw and a hobby knife and then taking two washers from that washer selection to make a little miniature key so starting with a slit made by the saw just so that it's nice and straight and that the slots are parallel to each other and then just widening that slit a little bit with a hobby knife so that it's wide enough to hold those two washers just glue those in place, and I'll show you what I'm talking about with the, the zip kicker trick here, is you just take the end of the nozzle, and that way you're not getting quite so much airborne. So just gonna lock those washers in there at the end of the tube, cut off an appropriate amount of 
you know, key stem. And then I'm gonna take a smaller bit of PVC tubing and put it inside so that, to just give the key a little bit more visual interest so it's not just a, a fat cylinder to make it a little narrower, like so. So all along this process, you know, just kind of, if you're trying to keep your conversions neat, keep a knife at hand, and anytime you're sawing, cutting, filing, it's good to just have a knife on hand to, to trim up any ugly edges. Gonna cut a nice little, very small ring of tube that's gonna fit onto the base of the key where the key meets the minotaur. And then drill a little hole in the back of the miniature that we've already started to paint. And this is the not recommended part. Uh, I really generally try once I've started painting to stop converting. Um, but this, this minotaur here just didn't quite look mechanical enough. I, I did the knee joints and the elbow joints, but didn't do the back portal. And I just, I just wasn't feeling, wasn't feeling the clockwork on this one. So with a hand drill, just drilling a little hole that's the same diameter as the thin tube that I used for the center of the key. And with that, we've got our finished key. We've got a hole in the minotaur that's the right size and we are ready to wind up our mechanical minotaur. Just fit that key in there, adjust the length of the key to what you'd like. And I'm just putting a little bit of plastic putty in the back end of the key where the, the hollow bit of the tube to make the end of the key look solid. Then it's handy to have a little bottle of brush on primer uh, at your hobby desk for stop times like this, or if you break something or scratch something. So just a little bit of brush on black primer will bring the key up to where the rest of the miniature is before we continue painting. All right, on to painting. I'm gonna kind of blast through this because there's a ton of great tutorials out there for weathered bronze. So I'll show you all the steps, um, but just kind of rapid fire, bang, bang, bang. And these don't take that long to paint. That's uh, not so dissimilar to a, uh, how these are painted. So this first step is Pro Acryl Dark Jade. It's a nice kind of emeraldy green, watered down some, and I'm just kind of randomly patchily applying this with a, a rough brush. Uh, it's settling into the cracks a little bit because there is some water, but it's not quite so thin as a wash. Um, but it's a, th a thin-ish coat. Your, you know, this paint is very opaque right out of the bottle, so you want to make it translucent, but not so thin as you would use for a wash. Once that's dry, we're gonna grab a pot of GW's Nilic Oxide, uh, which is just a super terrific paint for doing verdigris effects. Um, I often two brush this, um, not because it's anything you know super technical or anything. I just find it easier to be uh, putting it on with one brush and then having a, a damp, dry brush at the ready to kind of spread it out from where it sits in the cracks. Um, you don't want it to be too, too dark in the cracks. And, and having two brushes handy, one for application, one for spreading it out, is helpful. No right or wrong way to do this. Just keep at it till you're happy with how it looks. You could do it all over. You could just do little bits and pieces. Um, and once you're happy with it, we'll move on to the next step. Once you're happy with it and once it's dry, we're going to go back to the Pro Acryl Bronze and just do a really, really light dry brush all over the model to kind of bring up some of the edges um, and help define the surfaces a little bit. Um, so it's kind of an all over. Um, you can use this to kind of create, start to create some highlights and just real lightly kind of bringing back some of the, the edges and tips of the metal so that the green, the dark jade and the verdigris, the nilic oxide, both look like they're kind of a little more sitting in the cracks. But again, if you're happy with the way it looks after you apply the nilic oxide, you could skip this step. Um, just a, a light dry brush on some of the parts of the model to add more variation. Now, because this is a mechanical minotaur that is being wound up and charged into battle, there's going to be some parts of it that are, see a little more wear. The parts that are crashing into the enemy's lines are going to have their patina buffed off by combat. So I'm grabbing the Pro Acryl Rich Gold, which is a nice warm yellow metallic that works well as a highlight on brass and bronze. Um, and I'm just gonna add a light dry brush of this to all the parts of the Minotaur that I think would come into regular contact with the enemy in battle. So horns, you know, if it's smashing into lines, the, head, the top of the head, um, the fists, the knees, the, the hooves, are, they're gonna be coming into contact with the ground. Uh, so this is both helping to tell the story of the patina being worn away by combat and also is providing a nice little brighter highlight layer 
to draw attention to the face and the hands and some of the important parts of the model. And one of the fun things about painting weathered surfaces, is there's no right or wrong way to do it. Just keep at it till you're happy with how it looks. I'm gonna call it done somewhere around here with just kind of those gold highlights on the more worn spots, the spots that would see more wear. Now, this uh, could be an all over bronze figure, but I'm gonna make some of the parts of the miniature uh, steel, both just for some variety, to have more colors on the model. Um, well, mostly just for that reason. Um, I think you, know, you could do it all bronze, but I think having parts of it that are made out of steel will make it look a little bit less like a statue and more like a contraption. So I'm just hitting the uh, the rivet that's around the portal with steel, the weapons, some of the rivets on the knees, that sort of thing. So continuing to focus on the clockwork aspects of this miniature, I'm going to skip over painting the base, which I did kind of according to the same, uh, the basic basing video that I posted earlier. I'll put a link to that down below. Um, painted up the cloth to match the rest of the army. Um, and now I'm going in and with a little bit of black ink, I'm using the scale 75 ink intensity black. Um, I'm just putting in uh, a thin line of black into all those engraved lines that we made in the joints previously. That little bit of black will help tell the story that these are separate pieces um, and kind of add that deep dark shadow between them to make it look as if the, that elbow joint there is a actually separate piece, not just that there's a, a groove, but that there's, you know, these are maybe hollow plates of metal um, suspended with gears and clockwork inside. And what, so you're seeing a crack between two separate pieces, not just a, a joint. So I wouldn't skip this step. I think that this black line around the joints really does help define the shape of the miniatures and help tell the story that this is a, a clockwork minotaur. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm using the minotaurs for this. They're great models. Uh, it's the army project I'm working on right now, but I think that you could apply some of these same clockwork ideas to lots of other models out there to make clockwork contraptions for D&D, clockwork, you know, dwarven, dreadnoughts, stuff like that would be a lot of fun. Um, just having a collection of washers and cogs and screws around gives you lots of different options for fun conversions. Well, as ever, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, appreciate any comments below. Always happy to, to chat in the comments about the contents of the video. Uh, you can check out the Jolly Lark store at jollylark.com to order your own painting handles. They're available now. So like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll see you next time on another Jolly Lark.